Nice job in there, Polly. We made it through the first day. Yeah, even if it was by the skin of our teeth. It still counts. Well done, Apollo. Your performance reminded me of myself in my prime. Albeit your bluffing could still use some more work. I, for one, thought it was a pretty neat twist to put the masked stranger on the scene. Whoever could have guessed that the shady guy wearing a creepy mask would come under suspicion? To be fair, we cannot be absolutely sure that the masked stranger is our culprit, but they're definitely our best lead so far. The important thing is you bought Jack some more time. And that's our most valuable asset, right after decisive evidence. Better make use of the time we have then. Right now, Jack is our best bet for learning what exactly went down to the tournament room that night. If he can overcome his amnesia, that is. It's certainly worth a shot. He did seem to remember some new things after all. Not to mention that it's generally good form to check up on your client after the trial. Come on, let's go see Jack. We managed to survive the first day of Mr. Porter's trial, but we desperately need more evidence if we want him to be found not guilty. If anything, we need to get to the bottom of why Jack had his gun out when he was going to the tournament room. Ah, hello. Can I help you? Yes, we're here to see our client, Mr. Jack Porter. Uh, very well, sir. Mr. Porter is currently being processed after returning from court. I'll bring him in shortly. Thank you. Much obliged. Poor Jack. I hope the stress isn't getting to him. He can handle it. Jack knows how to keep cool under pressure. I should know. I've known him long enough. So, you and Mr. Porter really go way back, huh? We sure do. As Trucy told you, Jack's been one of my regulars for years. In fact, he was one of the first players I met at the club. I think I may have played against him more times than anyone else. With that in mind, is there anything important I should know about him? Jack may be pretty chatty, but the one thing he doesn't really talk about is himself. And I don't tend to pry into other people's secrets anymore. But he sure isn't a crook, Apollo! Shady past or not? I never said he was. Wait, what's this about Jack's past? Nothing explicit, but some of the things he slipped into our conversations over the years suggest him having some kind of connection to organized crime. You don't count that as explicit? Hey, as long as Jack isn't cleaning anyone outside the poker table, he's fine in my books. Either way, my eye for people tells me he's a decent guy despite his possible connections. Well, it wouldn't be the first time I'd be representing a mobster in court. Still, Mr. Porter doesn't exactly come off as your everyday mafia mook. Howdy, y'all. Fancy seeing you here. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Porter. Hello, Jack. What's up? Oh, nothing much. Still being accused of murdering my boss. Just one of those days, you know? Thanks for saving my bacon in there, by the way. 
Reckon I don't have to get used to playing cards with hardened criminals just yet. You're welcome, Mr. Porter, but we're still not out of the woods. I figured as much. Since they did put me back behind them bars, kind of a dead giveaway there, you know? How's your head feeling? Have you remembered anything else after the trial? I won't lie. The old noggin still feels like it survived a direct hit from a twister, and my memories are just about as scattered. I'll tell you what I can, but I can't promise miracles. Anything you can tell us is helpful. Our greatest weapon in this battle is the truth, after all. It'll be a start, at least. We can always try jogging his memory with some evidence later on. So, what you want to ask me about? Let's start where we parted ways. What happened after the cocktail party? After locking up the tournament room, I headed to the security room to keep an eye on the dough on display. That's what I was supposed to be doing all night after all. Did you check the tournament room before you left? Of course. I made absolutely sure that nobody was hiding in the room. I checked everywhere I could think of. Not that I suspected anything. Just part of the job description. So, clearly the stranger wasn't there at the time. So, how come you ended up going back to the tournament room? With your gun in hand, no less. I'm afraid that particular memory still eludes me. But I must have had a mighty good reason. Wasn't planning on killing anyone as far as I can remember. Of course! Why is it that amnesia never seems to work in our favor? Though, come to think of it, I might have left a note or something in the computer security log. We're supposed to jot a note in there. Should we notice anything that don't sit right, y'all ought to go check it out. Can't just waltz in there, though. Y'all will be needing an access card. Guess I should lend you mine, <laughs> since I ain't doing a whole lot with it at the moment. Keep it under wraps, though, won't you? Ain't exactly allowed to lend one of these out. Officially. Thanks, Jack. I'll just hide it in one of my trick decks. Hey, long as you don't make it disappear forever. Checking out the security room is usually a good idea. Just don't tell me you're hiding a suitcase full of foreign money in there, Jack. What are you on about, Nikki? The casino's got vaults for that sort of thing. Well, you never know. Do you remember anything that took place inside the tournament room? Hazily. Most I can remember is having a suspicious feeling about the stranger. But when he spoke, it became clear the fellow was an imposter. Because he lacked the true mass stranger's voice? That's right. I remember recognizing House's voice. And that's about all I can recall before I got socked in the face. Packed a real punch, too. My jaw's still hurting. But... How did Mr. House manage to get the jump on you? You had him at gunpoint! Beats me. I don't know for sure what happened, but I get this feeling of dread when trying to remember. I'm not entirely sure I want to. Everything becomes a mess in my head after that. The first thing I recall after that is waking up at the hospital with a horrible headache, made worse by the local sheriffs trying to drill me for info the moment I opened my eyes. No bedside manner whatsoever. Let me tell y'all. I can imagine. Just so we're clear, there was no bad blood between you and Mr. House or the masked stranger, right? Believe me, Paolo. House was a right rattlesnake of a boss, but that didn't warn him biting the bullet. I've worked for him for a couple of years now, and I ain't got nothing against House, or the stranger, or anyone else for that matter. I see. You all right there, Nikki? Never better. I'll take your word for it. I don't really get why Mr. House would attack you, though. Couldn't he just order you to stand down? I mean, he literally owns the place. Just standing around in his own casino isn't exactly illegal, even if he was wearing a disguise at the time. Wish I could give an explanation, but my noggin's filled with tumbleweeds on the matter. Guess there's no helping it for the time being. Yeah. That's about as much as I can tell y'all for now. That's fine. We'll be back once we've been to the scene, if only to keep you up to speed with the investigation. Much obliged, Paolo. Wish I could have been of more use. Thanks, Mr. Porter. We'll be sure to put this information to work. Good luck with that. I guess it's back to you. Solitaire with me. <sighs> Never change, Jack. Now then, 
What was that about, Daddy? I don't think Jack was being entirely forthright with us. When he said, I ain't got nothing against house, I saw Psyche Locks appear. That's not good. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Wright's special power. He can see when people are hiding secrets in their hearts. They manifest as mental locks that only he can see. Uh, hey, how come you didn't notice anything, Apollo? Good question. You do remember that my bracelet allows me to focus on the nervous habits of people, right? Well, I can't focus on nervous habits if that person isn't nervous! Which would imply that lying to a close family friend does not bother Jack at all. Hmm. Listen, we're strained for time, so I can't accompany you on your investigation. If we split up, we'll be able to cover more ground. You two should focus on the case at hand. Will I do some legwork on the casino floor? <sighs> Just as long as you don't end up grape juiced. I swear only to drink in moderation. Cross my heart. Speaking of which, if you happen to bump into Miss Garnet, I'd like you to ask her whether my grape juice stash survived the evacuation. Sure, but how would she know? Because I left the bag in her dressing room before the dress rehearsal started. Fair enough. Guess Trucy and I ought to check out the security room Jack mentioned. And we should try to find out if anyone saw anything strange that night, too. Sounds like a plan. Let's meet up in the casino's lobby later to compare notes. You got it, Daddy. The interview didn't exactly give us the evidence we needed, but at least we have a lead now. Let's hope Jack left something good for us to find. The casino appears to be as busy as ever. Yeah. In fact, it seems even more crowded here today, despite the tournament being postponed. Well, it's not like all the poker fans will just get up and leave. And with the added buzz from the murder, I bet there's a bunch of morbidly curious people lurking around too. I hope the security can take care of the situation even without Jack. I'm sensing a certain rowdiness in the crowd. I suppose that's the reason they have people doing pat-downs at the entrance now. In hindsight, I think you should have warned them about Mr. Hat. The poor security guard almost jumped out of his skin! Oh, come on, Polly. You know he'll be laughing at it a few years down the line. <laughs> Maybe, but it sure didn't help the current atmosphere. You could cut the tension with a knife. Even the slightest disturbance could. What the hell do you mean it's incorrect? I'm sorry, sir, but the number you guessed, however close it may be, is not the correct answer. In that case, your competition is a sham. That prize belongs to me. Hand it over! Oh dear, someone's making a scene! Hey, isn't that someone... Mr. Nash? It is! I wonder what he's so upset about. Guess we ought to try and defuse the situation and see if we can get him to talk. Unbelievable! This place is unbelievable! I'm willing to bet that you people had zero intention of paying up in the first place. This place is as much of a sham as its owner! Sir, the competition has been approved and carefully surveyed by the japan California Gambling Control Board. I assure you, there has been no tampering of the results. Excuse me, Mr. Nash? Oh, for crying out loud, what? Oh, it's you two. So out with it. What do you want now? You already dragged my reputation through the mud mere hours ago. Have you come to laugh at my involuntary participation in this charade as well? No, we were just trying to be nice. Oh, precious. Calling me to the witness stand, trying to frame me as a possible suspect, and then being nice afterwards. I don't think I can't see the formula here. I'm willing to bet you're just trying to butter me up for some more info. Well, he's not exactly wrong. Buzz off, both of you. I'm not in any mood to talk. What's wrong, Mr. Nash? Bah. As if you two actually care. Oh, come on! Why don't you give us a shot? Oh, at this point, it seems more probable that you won't leave me alone until I do, so... <sighs> Fine. Saves me some time. To sum it up, 
I was just told I'm one million dollars poorer. Yikes! I'm sorry. What happened? The fireworks spectacular competition revealed the official correct answer today, and they claim I've got it wrong. Apparently, I deviated by a single rocket too many. <laughs> now that is just insulting. But it all comes down to luck, doesn't it? Luck had absolutely nothing to do with it. Mainly because luck doesn't exist in a metaphysical space, except as an abstract concept to be blamed for one's shortcomings. What it really comes down to is statistics and probabilities. Pure, simple, and perfect math. Mr. Nash, uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but even I can see that the odds of guessing the correct amount of rockets is next to zero. The fact you assume that I would rely on guesswork is borderline insulting. I had a foolproof system. A system? Can you elaborate? Not that you care, but I have created a device that allows me to count the exact amount of rockets fired. So, what you're saying is that you tried to cheat at a guessing competition. Isn't it possible that your device bugged out? Absolutely not! I tested the device countless times to assure that it was 100% infallible. The calibrations were perfect. Wind speed, potential errors in trajectory, everything was accounted for. I had even set it up on the balcony of the tournament floor earlier for optimal coverage. Huh. So that's what the strange device we saw was. It's pretty impressive that you could build such a device. Are you doubting my abilities? I am an engineer by trade. It was a simple task for someone of my skill set. I... It was supposed to be a compliment, you jerk! So now you're just outright insulting me. I guess I shouldn't have expected any better from you lawyers. At least I can be proud of my profession and accomplishments as an engineer. Oh man, no matter what we say, this guy just seems to get madder at us. Well, I have to try something. It's interesting how you don't seem to let your status as an international poker legend define you, Mr. Nash. <laughs> I am both a statistician and an engineer first, and a poker legend second. The second status I have earned because of the first two. Much of my academic career has revolved around applying statistical phenomena to poker. Back in the good old days, I was even involved in making... <clears throat> Actually, that's none of your business. That sure was an abrupt stop. I wonder what he was about to say. Well, I can imagine it bites to have missed out on the prize. But isn't it the spirit of the excitement that really matters, Mr. Nash? Maybe, if this was an episode of the Pinky Rabbit Show. In reality, the cash reward is what the people are after, and you can't convince me otherwise. That's... cold. I'm sorry, Mr. Nash, but as someone who's known for his world-class poker abilities, you don't exactly strike me as someone who'd be hurting for money. <laughs> Let's... Examine that thought, shall we? Now, hypothetically, if you were to offer a hundred people the option to receive a million dollars with no strings attached, how many would say yes? Uh, about a hundred? Within a reasonable degree of certainty, yes. Now, let's say those people are millionaires. Is there any reason to suspect the odds would be significantly different? Well, when you put it like that... Exactly. In other words, stop and think before you open your mouth. Jeez. Got any more asinine questions? Well, since you're asking, what do you think about the masked stranger? What does it matter? They're busy pushing up daisies, aren't they? Ah, right. Mr. Nash left the court before the role of the true stranger came to light. What if I told you they weren't? We proved that Mr. House couldn't have been the masked stranger in today's trial. Then why are you two bothering me? I've never met the stranger in my life. But you seemed pretty determined to meet them back when we talked to you during the cocktail party. Naturally. 
They are a statistical anomaly when you consider their current win streak. Sort of like Daddy. Or Mr. House before his murder. House. Bah. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there something he said earlier? Speaking of House, I couldn't help but hear you say, this place is as much of a sham as its owner. Um, what did you mean by that? Was I unclear about the implications? Try calculating the odds of winning the damn tournament nine times in a row, and even you might see that something's wrong. Are you saying Mr. House was a cheater? But how was his winning streak any different from the strangers? I said House was a sham. And that's all I'm going to say on that topic. And <clears throat> on that note, I think that's more than enough of my time wasted on you. Please? We'd still like to ask you more about the night of the murder. You had your chance in court. I saw the scene and informed the cops. That's all. You already got my testimony, and that's all you're getting from me. Besides, you still owe me for breaking my lighter. Is there no way we can convince you to help us? I've said my piece about the case. Unless your questions have to do with engineering or statistics-related subjects, we've nothing to talk about. Of course, I could always reconsider if you give me the million dollars I was wrongfully denied. We don't have that kind of money just lying around. And even if we did, we can't just give money to witnesses. That's not just unethical, but illegal. I mean, what kind of an attorney would I be if I did that? <laughs> oh, I'm so sure that would be a huge ethical dilemma for you attorneys. Uh, uh huh? Heed the words of past experience. If there's just one absolute truth in this world, it's the fact that everyone has a price. That is the very reason why money equals power. Namely, the power to create a truth that suits your own goals. After all, how much is Mr. Porter paying you for your services? Hey, we're representing him free of charge. We are? I, I guess we are now. And we're only trying to find the truth of this case, not twist it. Really? Well, isn't that adorable? Look at us! We're doing pro bono work! Aren't we so admirable and virtuous? If you expect me to fall for that front, then you will be sorely disappointed. I know all too well how this game is played. You scratch my back, and I scratch yours. You know my price. So either get me what I want, or scram. <sighs> While I don't appreciate his attitude, we should see if we can come across something to convince him to be more helpful. We'll see what we can do, Mr. Nash. <laughs> don't sweat it. I'm not exactly betting my retirement fund on you. And don't come bothering me before you have what I want. Got it? And there he goes. Guess Mr. Nash really didn't feel like helping us. Since when is that new with witnesses? Although, the way his attitude really changed at the end there, it's as if pure resentment was oozing from his words. Well, no use wondering about that for now. We need to get going. Right, we should resume the investigation as soon as possible. Excuse me, Mr. Justice and Miss Wright. I didn't wish to interrupt your conversation, but Miss Felicia Garnett has urgently requested for you to meet her backstage. Well, if it's really that urgent, I suppose we can make just a little detour. Look at you, Apollo. Always so ready to help a lady in her time of need. Give me a break, Trucy. The security room is not going anywhere, and Lucky might have some important information for us, too. I wonder what she wants. I guess we'll see soon enough. Thank you for letting us know. You're most welcome. If there's anything else I can help with, please do not hesitate to ask. Well, sure. Uh, did you happen to witness anything out of the ordinary on the day of the murder? Absolutely not. Not a single thing. I just wanted to make sure in case you needed me to write an affidavit about that. I think we'll be just fine, thanks. Very good, sir. In that case, please follow me backstage.
The backstage area is larger than I imagined. Reminds me of the Gaviner's concert from way back when. Everyone here looks to be quite busy. I'll be taking my leave now. Have a lovely day. The forehead force is behind you two all the way. I... What? Forehead force? <sighs> Snap out of it, Polly! We still need to find the star of the show! Uh, right! Oh, what am I going to do? There she is! Ah, oh, Mr. Justice! Ms. Wright! Thank goodness you are here! Hey! How are you doing, Lucky? I am so glad that you came! This is very important! I'd like to request your help with a very delicate matter! I would have asked you personally, but ever since the murder, I haven't been able to enter or leave the backstage area without being swarmed by the police or journalists. Ugh. In fact, seems like those scandal mongers were just waiting for something to go wrong that night. Take a look at this. Gossip Land? What's this all about? Apparently, a roaming paparazzi decided that photographing yours truly amidst the chaos of the evacuation was a big enough deal to write an article about. So, you'd like us to sue the journalists in question? Oh, heavens no! Exaggerated articles and gossip magazines are just part and parcel of being a star. Then is it related to the case somehow? We were hoping you could help us out. Believe me. I would love to help you too, but right now, I have more pressing things on my mind. More pressing than a murder investigation? Can I trust you two to keep this absolutely confidential? Uh, sure. What is it? There's been... a kidnapping! What? Who's been kidnapped? Mr. Pinky! You mean... your Pinky Rabbit doll? That is horrible! If Mr. Hat was kidnapped, I would be pretty devastated too! I knew you'd understand! And what's worse, the so-called police claim they don't have any resources to investigate! So the stage crew and I have desperately been looking for him instead! But, now that you're here… Um… Fear not, Miss Lucky! We won't stop searching until Mr. Pinky is safe and sound in your arms again! Isn't that right, Apollo? We really should be focusing on finding clues to help Jack. But I suppose there's no harm in keeping our eyes open. Uh, right. We'll see if we can't find any information on Mr. Pinky while we investigate. Oh, thank you! Thank you, thank you! Although, couldn't you just pull Mr. Pinky out of your hat, Trucy? It would save us a whole lot of trouble! Apollo! You know my magic doesn't work that way! Besides, this is no joking matter! Jeez, sorry for trying to lighten the mood. I do have to ask, though, what makes you so sure that Mr. Pinky was, uh, kidnapped? When was the last time you saw him? On New Year's Eve! I left him in my dressing room when I went to perform on stage for the Midnight Jazz Travaganza at 11 p.m. When I came back during the intermission before the grand finale, he was gone! When exactly was this intermission? That would have been at about 30 minutes to midnight. So, 11.30 p.m. Ever since we got back here after the evacuation, we've looked all over backstage several times, but haven't been able to find a trace of him anywhere. I've personally inspected my dressing room from top to bottom, though. A lady has a right to privacy, after all. Yep, there's plenty of things to be kept from prying eyes. At first, I thought we'd find him in no time at all, because Mr. Pinky has a small tracking device on him. When it's activated remotely, he lets out a happy little laugh. Oh, and of course there's GPS tracking as well, but even that cannot locate him. Wow, you're really invested in keeping Mr. Pinky safe. Of course. I can't possibly focus on doing my best at the card table if he's missing. I guess we can assume Mr. Pinky didn't just walk away to play a round of cards by himself. Ooh, that gives me an idea for my next magic trick! I don't think magic had anything to do with Mr. Pinky's disappearance, though. 
Who else was backstage around the time? To my knowledge, just the stage crew. But they were all busy at their own stations. The show is very technically complex, so nobody could have left their stations without affecting it. Unfortunately, that means everyone was so focused on doing their job that nobody saw the kidnapper. Maybe an obsessive fan snuck backstage during the show? I should hope not. Although, we have had an incident or two over the years. We have since bolstered security by the backstage entrance doors. The guards there didn't report seeing anyone suspicious either. Have you found anything at all that would help track Mr. Pinky down? Nothing. That's what worries me. There's no ransom note, no threatening phone calls, or anything like that. Murder, arson, and rabbit napping. What a case this is turning out to be. How could someone do something like this? Who knows? Spite? Jealousy? Pure evil? Oh. I bet the culprit is the bad badger! He's the one with the biggest bone to pick with Mr. Pinky! While that's usually a good place to start, I would like to remind you that the Bad Badger is a fictional character. And even if he wasn't, it still wouldn't make sense. The Pinky Rabbit doll Miss Garnet has is the classic Pinky, the forest friend of everyone. There wasn't even a proper antagonist in the original show from the late 70s. That's absolutely right. You impressed me again, Mr. Justice. Holly! How do you know so much about Pinky Rabbit anyway? Simple. When you grow up and taped Pinky reruns, you start paying attention to the little things. Ah, uh, the classic Pinky Rabbit truly was the golden era of the show. Mr. Pinky used to be my best friend, right after my grandpa. He's the one who gave Mr. Pinky to me as a present all those years ago. Sadly, he is no longer with us. And with Mr. Pinky gone, my most precious memento of him is lost! That's twice as tragic! Apollo, we simply must find Mr. Pinky! I hear you loud and clear, Trucy. <sighs> so, considering the casino is filled with Pinky merchandise, is there anything that we can use to identify the real Mr. Pinky? There certainly is! I'm sure a Pinky Rabbit fanatic such as Mr. Justice already noticed the fact that they subtly changed Pinky's design for the new movie. Most notably, the tips of his fingers and toes used to be white, but in the new version, they're pink. Seems like the Gatewater Corporation really wants to pretend that the original Pinky never existed. Truth be told, I was too busy paying attention to Pinky tearing out badger innards to notice that particular detail. So look for a rabbit with white fingertips. Got it! Anything else I can help you with? Uh, just one last thing before we go, Lucky. Do you remember seeing anything strange on the day of the murder? I don't think so. After the welcoming cocktail party, I went straight to the tiny tourney venue. Oh, speaking of the tiny tourney, what happened to Mr. Rockwell after you chased after him? I'm afraid he managed to disappear in the crowd. Quite an achievement considering his frame. He's surprisingly fast. Unfortunately, there was no time for me to track him down, because one of the stage crew members called to inform me that our usual pianist had suddenly fallen ill. Food poisoning, I was told. Lucky for me, I happened to bump into Mr. Wright a bit later, who was more than happy to agree to play the piano for our dress rehearsal. I remember that! Daddy left at one point in the evening to go help you out! And, as a professional performer, how would you rate his performance? We had some... creative differences. His style was more... Uh, grunge than... jazz. We ended up just using a recording for the rehearsal, but I just might ask him to join us again for our Halloween spooktacular show. I've never heard anyone capture despair and agony in music form so well. Ouch. That sounds like Daddy's playing all right. Luckily, we ended up getting an emergency pianist just in time for the actual show. I invited Mr. Wright to stay nevertheless to offer us audience feedback. I believe he stayed to watch the show itself as well. As for myself, 
I spent the whole night here, both on and off the stage. Tragically, the grand finale of our show was cut short by the fire alarm, and we had to evacuate the theater. A shame, but safety always comes first. What's more, as soon as the fire alarm went off, the emergency lights came on. Too bad that everything else went dark, so it was actually harder to find our way out. I'm just glad there wasn't a huge panic. You mean to say everything was shrouded in darkness? Yes! The theater, the stage, and even the backstage were lit only by emergency lights. You could barely see your hand in front of you. I did make it out in one piece, luckily. We're glad you did! By the way, did you happen to see the masked stranger at all on the night of the murder? No. I only saw them in the morning of December 31st, when they passed me in the tournament floor hallway. I didn't even really get a chance to say hi. I see. Thank you, Lucky. You've been really helpful. Oh, just one more thing. We needed to ask about Daddy's grape juice. Grape juice? Oh, yes. He said he left his duffel bag in your dressing room last night. He did. It's still here for safekeeping. Great. We can take that off your hands now. One less thing for you to worry about. Oh, I really don't mind. Really? It's not a big deal. Right, Apollo? Thanks for volunteering me to be the beast of burden, Trucy. I would love to, but, uh, to tell you the truth, there was a small accident while I was searching for Pinky, and I think I broke a bunch of the bottles. Oh, dear. Daddy won't be happy about that. I'm so sorry. Please don't tell him about this. I'll let you two know as soon as I've bought replacements for Mr. Wright, okay? Okay, we promise to keep it a secret. Yeah, our lips are sealed. Thank you. I really don't need any more stress at the moment. I owe you both for this. So, where to next? I think it's high time we head to the tournament floor. If you're going there, you can use the backstage elevator. It will take you straight to the tournament floor. Wait, I thought only the VIP elevator did that. Oh, you didn't know? It's the same elevator, so it comes down here as well. Makes it easy for the performers staying in the VIP suites up in the tournament floor to get down here without being swarmed by fans. So the VIP elevator is connected to the backstage area? Hmm, better make a note of that. Thanks for your help, Lucky! We'll be back with Mr. Pinky before you know it. I pray that you do. Good luck, you two. All right. The security room should be down the hall to the right. Yep. Hey, this area is off limits. Oh, never mind. It's just you. Hi, Detective Sky. What's new? Seaweed-flavored snack ooze. Ew. Ow! What's going into her this time? What are you doing out here in the hall, Detective Sky? Shouldn't you be at the crime scene? I was. Until me and my team got kicked out. You got kicked out? By who? You'll never believe it. None other than the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Their boys came out of nowhere this morning and told my team to book it. So now we have been relegated to investigating the guest rooms while they hog the actual crime scene. The FBI? What do they have to do with this case? Beats me. I suppose nothing involving Mr. House's murder, as they didn't claim jurisdiction over the investigation. So that case still belongs to us. What could they be after then? They weren't exactly jumping at the chance to explain themselves. But as a general rule, the FBI only gets involved in murder investigations if they suspect involvement of serious organized crime. Like the Mafia? The Yakuza, Cosa Nostra, the Triads, whatever your flavor is. I'm starting to think Mr. House isn't exactly turning out to be a poster boy for ethical business practices. Not really surprising, considering the rumors about the place after what happened with the previous owner. Oh? What happened? If I recall correctly, he got caught with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar of gambling fraud. The aftershock led to a whole new set of laws to regulate the industry. 
can't remember much else, since the case wasn't particularly big on forensics. Oh, yes. Mr. Wright did mention the Japan Afford Gambling Act yesterday. We should ask him to tell us more about it later. Either way, that scandal was the death knell for most casinos in the state. But the Royal Flush managed to stay open by some miracle under new management. Let me guess. Rex House? Exactly. Mr. Houts had been the owner of the casino ever since the old owner's conviction. But I don't think for one second that the feds haven't been keeping tabs on the casino after that. Come to think of it, I guess that might be why we got thrown off the scene. Regardless, the murder investigation and Mr. Porter's trial remains otherwise unaffected. Oh, and you had better give up any hope of getting to investigate the scene. The feds really don't want outsiders in there messing around before they are done. Any idea when that might be? Not today, that's for sure. At least now you know how we feel every time we get barred from the crime scene. Yeah, maybe I should do you a solid and let you know what we found out so far. Because frankly, this situation bites. And if it gives you a chance to one-up Prosecutor Gavin in court, well, that's just icing on the cake, isn't it? Speaking of Gavin, have you noticed anything odd about him? He was acting quite strange earlier in court. What do you mean? The whole special offer deal. It seemed very unlike him. You seem quite troubled, Herr Forehead. Why don't I help you out? In honor of the new year, I would like to offer you a one-time limited deal. Huh? It's simple, really. If the defendant pleads guilty right now, the prosecution will drop the murder charge in favor of a manslaughter charge. And I'm sure Herr Judge will be willing to grant some leniency as well. Otherwise, Mr. Porter's charge will remain as murder, along with its associated penalty. I suppose that was a bit strange. Now that I think about it, I think he has been more invested than usual in this case. He wants every detail of the investigation double and triple checked, sometimes by independent investigators. No way he is doing it without a good reason. Could it be because of the dark age of the law? I mean, it's good to be thorough, but we've hardly made any progress with the investigation. So what have you got for us then? Have you at least been able to find the masked stranger yet? I'm afraid not. We've issued an APB and a public notice requesting information, but it's as if the stranger has disappeared into thin air. And frankly, we have few leads to pursue. In short, don't count on the stranger coming to your rescue anytime soon. Rats. Is there anything new you've learned about the fire in the tournament room? Yeah, that blaze has been bothering me too. The guys from Arson finished up their investigation before the feds showed up, but they never ended up reporting their findings to us. MPD bureaucrats can just hand the report over because of red tape. But we can safely assume that our lovable prosecutor will file for the report regardless with his newfound energy. So essentially, if the report has anything useful, we'll know when it's used against us. That's about the gist of it. Is there anything at all you found in the tournament room before the FBI took over? Well, there is something else we found that wasn't entered into evidence yet. Namely, a bunch of these small beads were scattered around the tournament room's floor. We even found some under the victim's body. Now that I think about it, I remember seeing those as well. We don't know for certain what they are or where they came from. Prosecutor Gavin didn't seem to think they were too important. No evidence is too insignificant for a defense attorney if it helps us learn the truth. Although, I can see why Claudia wouldn't bother with them, with all the other evidence stacked against Mr. Porter. By all means, make a note of it if you'd like. Anyway, if you really want to investigate, you're free to come with me to check out the stranger's room. Thanks, Emma. We definitely owe you one for this. I'll hold you to that. Now, follow me. So, this is the room the masked stranger was staying in? Yes. The hotel's booking records show that this room was reserved specifically for them. Unfortunately for us, it seems that there's not a whole lot of the stranger left in here. We haven't even recovered any personal effects. Now that she mentions it, the stranger did arrive without any luggage that day. So, is it really okay for us to investigate the room? Of course. Knock yourself out. I'll be watching you anyway. 
Okay, Apollo. What catches your eye first? Let's see… This seems to be an electronic safe. It looks extremely sturdy. Too bad the door was left wide open. That kind of defeats the entire point, doesn't it? Not only that, but it seems that the electronics of the safe are busted. Really? What a rip. You'd think the hotel would ensure that their VIP guests have a safe place to store their valuables. Actually, they did. According to hotel management, all the safes in the tournament floor were confirmed to be working on the morning of December 31st, before any of the guests had arrived. So this safe must have broken sometime after that. Does that mean somebody broke into the masked stranger's safe? We found no signs that any kind of physical force was used. But then again, the only thing we could find inside were a couple of strands of pink and white hair. Strands of hair, huh? Interesting. It seems that the safe is not the only thing that's busted, though. It's like the entire room was attacked by some type of gremlins. Scientifically speaking. Gremlins? What makes you say that? It's just, this kind of damage to electronics is not usually encountered during regular crime scene investigations. Do you have any idea about the cause? Believe it or not, it almost looks like the result of a lightning strike. How is that even possible? We're indoors and the windows are all intact! Hey, I'm just telling you what it looks like to me. Maybe a passing UFO thought it was under attack by the fireworks and retaliated by firing an invisible electricity beam? Or maybe you've been watching too many of those cheap sci-fi movies. I mean, really, are we supposed to believe that the masked stranger is some sort of thunder god? Oh, what if the stranger is an alien? Hey, maybe they turned into electricity and escaped the casino via the phone line. Or maybe they beamed back aboard their spaceship. The masked stranger is not an alien! Killjoy. That does it. I'm talking to Mr. Wright about canceling our subscription to that sci-fi channel. Either way, something strange clearly happened here. But what? We'd better take a closer look at any other electrical equipment in the room. Speaking of phone lines, it's been a while since I've seen a corded phone. Yeah, it seems that you can only find them in hotel rooms and offices these days. Yep, pretty much everyone uses a cell phone these days. But not quite everyone. According to the hotel's call records, this phone was actually used on the night of December 31st. The masked stranger called someone? That's what we think, at least. So, if this phone was used that day… Emma, am I wrong to assume that you checked the phone for fingerprints? Of course we did. And what did you find? Well, we were able to lift several fingerprints from the phone. No way! Even the stranger's prints? It's hard to say for sure, since many people stay in these rooms and their staff to take into account. We ran those fingerprints through the National Police Database, but unfortunately, nothing came up. Bummer. So we're still no closer to finding out who the stranger is? Unless, of course, the person the stranger called knows who they are! That's exactly what we thought as well! But so far, we haven't managed to get into contact with whoever they called. The biggest issue being that the call was made to a cell phone in Borginia, so that adds a whole new level of paperwork to get the information delivered to us. Plus, taking into account the difference in time zones, progress is not exactly smooth. I guess that makes sense. The stranger's land of origin is just as big of a mystery as the rest of the information about their personal life. And that's why we have been in contact with Interpol to try and have them run the prints against their own database. But nothing's come up yet. It's a long shot, and it would certainly make this job a lot easier if we knew what they discussed. Let me tell you, all this red tape is the worst part of this job. Right after having to work with Prosecutor Rockstar, of course. Daddy once told me that one of his most important cases ever involved wiretapping of a phone. You thinking what I'm thinking, Apollo? Please, for the love of all that is good, don't mess with the evidence, Trucy. But we can't just take the phone apart. First, we need to... Alakazam! Let's see what we have here. Oh, yeah, I didn't think so either. Oh, boy. Wh what have you done? You can't just... Oh, my goodness. That's a wiretap, all right. What? Trucy, if this is one of your magic tricks, I swear. 
Nope. Just some magician's intuition. Or do you honestly think I carry spare wiretaps up my sleeve? Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised. Really, Polly? If I wanted to listen in on your phone conversations, I would just use telepathy like any self-respecting magician. That's not my point! Okay, I'm gonna let this slide since it was surprisingly helpful. But I'm sorry, but we need you to leave the scene. This wiretap is now our team's priority number one. Oh man, seriously? This is how you thank us for helping out? There's no finders keepers when it comes to evidence, I'm afraid. But don't worry, we'll make sure you get the full report. In court. Well, at least Emma seems excited. I'm not sure how this will affect us, but we can only hope for the best. I guess we'll resume our investigation elsewhere for now. Weren't we supposed to go take a look inside the security room anyway? Yeah, we really should. Let's go, it should be just down the hall. Huh, so this is where Jack was holed up on the night of the murder. Looks pretty cozy, actually. Cozy or not, I sure hope he left a clue or two for us. Looks like Jack wrote the username and password to the computer terminal on the back of the keycard. Oh? He sure trusts us a lot with that kind of access. The credentials are written in permanent marker. I don't think he wrote them specifically for us. Uh, oh, well, as long as they work. Give me the username. Um, Porter. And the password? Password. Yeah, that's what I said. What's the password? Password! Trucy, just tell me the password. I am trying to! The password is... password! Seriously? Good grief. Some head of security Jack is. Okay, we're in. There's the surveillance recordings. Looks like Clavier was correct. All security footage from last year is gone. Guess we've confirmed it for ourselves now. It all just seems too convenient somehow. Hey! That monitor shows the crime scene! Looks like the camera is the same one that captured the footage of Jack holding the masked stranger at gunpoint. No issues with the feed this time. The FBI agents seem to be hard at work. I wonder what they're looking for. Whatever it is, it must be something big. Well, no use wondering about that. We have to find something to prove Jack's innocence. Right. Another camera overlooks the burned cache. I wonder if it could shed some light on what caused the fire. Let's find out! Okay, there's the cache before the fire. It gets cut off by the static and... The next thing we know, it's ablaze. Nothing here to suggest the cause. Guess we should keep looking then. Okay, let's have a look at the security log. Huh, the log file is empty. Uh, apart from a single entry, December 31st, 12 a.m. Heading off to check things out, as requested. As requested? Does this mean that someone asked Jack to go to the tournament room? Maybe he can tell us about that. We need to show this log to him later. Let's see if we can't find anything else. There's another folder here. It's simply titled House. That can't be a coincidence. Come on, Apollo, let's take a look. Well, what is it? It seems to be full of information on Mr. House. Guess that was to be expected. Just your basic security room filler documents, then? Not quite. It actually seems to be part of a report on an ongoing investigation into Mr. House for suspected gambling fraud. What? Key parts have been redacted, but there's no mistaking it. There's the seal of the FBI on these documents. And that's not all. There's also a file with detailed records of all the All-Stars Legends tournament rounds ever played. Why would Jack have this information? Why indeed? Only one way to find out. We should ask the man himself. I guess there's nothing left for us but to hit the road. Jack sure has a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, I would say this is more than enough for now. We should meet up with Mr. Wright first and see what he's found.
Hmm. No sight of Mr. Wright yet. Oh, but look, Apollo. There's Mr. Rockwell. So it is. Come to think of it, we haven't talked to him yet, have we? Now is the perfect chance. We could at least confirm his alibi, if nothing else. Hey there, Mr. Rockwell. Mr. Rockwell? Hello? Trucy, I think he's ignoring us. Mr. Rockwell! What? See, he can hear you just fine. Sorry, I just wanted your attention for a moment. So? We need your help. Since you're a potential eyewitness, can you tell us about what you saw on the night of the murder? No. Ouch! Rejected straight off the bat. Uh, do you have any particular reason for not wanting to speak with us? Don't wanna. But our friend Mr. Porter is in danger and we need to help him. Where is defense team? Sad. Don't care so. Listen, Mr. Rockwell, I personally saw you go upstairs with the masked stranger. What happened afterwards? They left. Anything else? Could you please be just a little more specific? No. Jeez, it feels like we'd have more luck squeezing blood from a stone than information out of this guy. Although, there's something I really should ask him about. Mr. Rockwell, I'd like to ask you about the tiny tourney. Zip it. But I just wanted to know, what caused you to lose your cool? The moment we were about to start the game. Stop. You just up and ran when Lucky and- It's none of your goddamn business, boy! <laughs> well, remind me not to bring that up without a good reason again. I uh, yep. Done talking. Well, I'm stumped. Any ideas, Trucy? Usually when I face a tough crowd, I just flash them my magic panties and that riles them right up. I don't think that's going to work here, though. We could try to melt his stone heart using something ridiculously cute. <laughs> like what? A fluffy bunny? Uh, my bracelet reacted! Did he just... flinch? Seven. Words. Got. Nothing. To. Say. Got. An. Alibi! Can you at least tell us what your alibi is, then? No! Bye! <sighs> Not a very fruitful conversation, was it? Well, every little bit helps. Mr. Rockwell did seem to be oddly defensive. Agreed. His words may not tell us much, but his body language says more than enough. What do you think it means? Hard to say for now. But it's clear Mr. Rockwell has something to hide. But whether it ties to the murder is still up in the air. A tough crowd, huh? Oh, hi, Daddy. <laughs> Looks like you're keeping yourselves busy. How's the investigation going? We brought Mr. Wright up to speed about the investigation so far. I see. You've done well. And the grape juice? Oh, that? Still in Garnet's dressing room. We promised to pick it up for you later. Oh, fair enough. I guess it's fair to not have you haul my drinks around all day. How about you, Daddy? What have you found? I talked with the Masked Strangers fans here on the casino floor. Fortunately for us, those people are obsessed with keeping track of the Strangers' movements. What's not so lucky is not one of them claims to have seen the Stranger after they took the elevator up to the tournament floor. So, we are no closer to finding out what happened to them. Sorry to disappoint, sweetheart. I wish I could tell you more. That reminds me! Mr. Wright, I've been meaning to ask. Yesterday you mentioned the Japanifornia Gambling Act and how there's a story behind it. Could you tell us about it? Ah, uh, yes. I'm sure you've been wondering why gambling is such a strictly regulated enterprise these days. Well, there's a good reason. Back in the day, Many of the casinos in our state were owned by organized crime syndicates and used as tools for gambling fraud and money laundering. Many of these crimes were committed using a method called remote rigging, or changing the winning odds of electronic gambling machines on the fly. In other words, someone inside the casino control room decided exactly who wins, how much, and when. 
Unsurprisingly, many jackpots ended up going to affiliates of the Mafia. When the first case came to light a bit over a decade ago, it caused a public outrage, and politicians had to act fast. Thus, the Japanifornia Gambling Act was created. One of its provisions required all electronic gambling machines to have the odds hardwired into the devices to stop any possibility of tampering with them. The development of such a solution was promoted by the previous owner of this casino, Mr. Charles Argyne, who had made his fortune building and selling gambling machines. Ironically enough, he was eventually caught cheating in the very tournament designed to showcase his company's tamper-proof electronic poker tables in what came to be known as the AC3 case. Mr. Argyne was about to be sent to jail by the very law he had been fiercely supporting. But he vanished without a trace before they could catch him. Yikes! A nerve of some people! And that, shortly put, is the reason gambling has such a bad name these days. The Mafia again? We can't seem to take two steps in this case without running into them. Anyway, I'm afraid that's all I have for you now. All things considered, I should call in a favor or two and see if I can't get you a copy of the case files to study later. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Trucy and I should head to the detention center before the visiting hours are over. Right. Jack has got some explaining to do. Sounds like a good idea. I've still got a few things I'd like to check out, so you go on ahead without me for now. Tell Jack I look forward to our next game. Ah, Trucy and Paulo. Good to see you two again. Did y'all figure out who done it yet? Are you here to let me out? I'm afraid not, Mr. Porter, but we did find some evidence we'd like you to take a look at. Sure thing. First of all, there was this entry on the security logbook that I wanted to ask you about. December 31st, 12 a.m. Heading off to check things out as requested. Things. As requested. Ah, yeah, that thing. Now I remember, the reason I went to the scene was that someone asked to meet me there. Who was it? No idea, but hang on a second. Now that you reminded me, I'm certain I had it on me when I left. There we go. I was sitting in the security room minding my own business when suddenly this card was slipped under the door. By the time I had read it and looked out the door, Whoever had left it was long gone. Couldn't you just check the security footage to see who it was? Tough luck. The tournament room is the one and only place on that floor to have security cameras installed to ensure privacy for our VIP guests. May we see the card? Sure. Knock yourselves out. Meet me in the tournament room at midnight. I have important information regarding your investigation. Speak of this to no one else. Signed the masked stranger. Naturally, all this sounded mighty fishy to me. First of all, the masked stranger shouldn't have been able to access the tournament room in the first place. But even if they could have, I knew right away that this note was not written by the masked stranger. Oh? How can you be so sure? See, the masked stranger never actually refers to themselves as the masked stranger. Not once ever right the name was coined entirely by their fan base oh yeah now that i think back to the moment we first saw them i care not what you decide to call me i am but a player of cards and never shall i refer to myself as anything else for i am not a stranger to myself reckon the note was probably left by a house pretending to be the stranger He's the only other guy with access to the tournament room anyway. But if you suspected it was House, why did you have your gun out? In this line of business, if you let your guard down for a second, you'll live to regret it. Or rather, you won't. Could have been anyone under the suit at the time. And considering they socked me, I'd say I was right to be on guard, eh? You know, I think I saw House enter the tournament room a good half an hour before midnight. Didn't see him do anything too suspicious, though. Figured I'd survey the situation a bit longer, but nada. 
So, knowing the risks, why didn't you call for backup? Oh, <laughs> I figured me and my trusty six-shooter would be just fine. Turns out I jumped the gun on that one. <laughs> Is that really the only reason you had, Mr. Porter? The note you received mentions an investigation. Any idea what that is referring to? Uh, nothing in particular comes to mind. Mr. Porter, be honest with us. We found the files on Mr. House that you had on your computer. Oh, uh, you did, huh? If we are going to represent you in court, we need to know what is going on. All of it. Yeah, Jack. You've known me and Daddy for years. If you can't trust me and Apollo while we're doing our best to keep you out of jail... <sighs> Guess I ain't weaseling out of that one. It serves me right for not hiding it better. Then tell us! What is this all about? <sighs> the truth is, I'm more than just a security guy at House's Casino. I am Special Agent Porter from the FBI Organized Crime Unit. After the Royal Flush had its change of management, it's been my job for the past couple years to keep a close eye on Mr. House and his business dealings. You... you're an undercover agent? That's right. I'm afraid I've not been entirely honest with y'all. I can't believe this. How long have you been lying to me and Daddy? No! How long were you going to keep doing so? Listen, Cece... Don't call me that, Mr. Porter! Yikes. I don't think I've ever seen Trucy like this before. Just answer me this one question. Did you use the time you and Daddy spent together to spy on him? <sighs> I thought you might ask that if this ever came to light. And I'm going to be frank. I admit that Nikki used to be a person of interest to us for some time because of his past and seemingly unbeatable poker skills. However, our investigation proved that he was not involved in any foul play. You've got some nerve. How dare you treat my father like that after everything he's had to go through just to try and make things right? I'm afraid in this line of work, we have to confirm everything ourselves before we can make that call. Regardless, the investigation into Nikki was closed years ago, and I've kept in touch with y'all because I myself wanted to. Please. I'm still the same Uncle Jack you've always known. Your family friend. Nothing has changed, right? Then why does it feel like I don't even know who you are anymore? Trucy, um, sorry. I, I, I truly am, for what it's worth. It has not been easy keeping a front with y'all for all these years. But please try to understand why I had to do so. While the truth hurts, the comfort offered by lies is short-lived. I've decided to trust you with this, and it's not something I say lightly. <laughs> yeah, after hiding it for years and now telling us under duress, how very convenient for you. You got me there. I'm not sure if there's anything at all I can say to make things better on a personal level, but at least hear me out for the sake of my team's work, if nothing else. Aside from the Bureau, you two are now the only people who know about my true job, and I prefer keeping it that way. Because what I'm about to tell you is absolutely confidential. If word got out that I leaked the details of an ongoing federal investigation, it could very well jeopardize the entire case we've been building for the past years. We can't have that happen. Not now that trust in the justice system is at an all-time low. <sighs> As long as you are working to fix things. Thank you for trusting us, Mr. Porter. I promise that your secrets will be safe with us. Please, tell us about your investigation. It's a long story, so I'll just start from the beginning. You see, Mr. House was not always Mr. House. Rather, for much of his life, he was known as Noah Buddy, a small-time businessman with loose ethics and a questionable background for his income used to run a small gambling parlor in a seedy part of Angeles Bay and relieve the occasional chump of their money. From the FBI's point of view, he was considered a small fish. Insignificant even. Totally a local PD-level crook. The kind of fella whose business would have surely gone belly up after the Japanifornia Gambling Act had passed. 
But all that changed almost overnight when Mr. Buddy came into a massive fortune after winning a certain infamous poker tournament. Let me guess, the Poker All-Stars Legends? No, this was the one tournament that started it all, the Argyne Gambling Showcase. Argyne? Wasn't that the name of the casino's previous owner? Well, to be fair, Mr. Buddy didn't exactly win that tournament in the traditional sense. What do you mean? Mr. Buddy actually lost the final round against the reigning champion, Mr. Charles Argyne, the leader of the Deck Poker Club at the time. However, an anonymous tip was later made to the police, claiming that the electronic poker table used in the tournament violated the Japanifornia Gambling Act and that Argyne had cheated in order to win the tournament. Upon investigation, the police found that Mr. Argyne's poker table was clearly rigged to favor the player sitting at his position. Mr. Argyne was thus disqualified, and Mr. Buddy declared the winner of the tournament. So he got rich off the prize money? Oh, it wasn't the prize money that made Mr. Buddy so wealthy, but the fact that Mr. Argyne was the leader of the deck. You see, the deck has a very unique way of determining its leadership. Whoever beats the current leader in poker will replace them as king of the deck and gain direct and sole control over all of the deck's financial assets, including the Royal Flush Casino. Having technically beaten Mr. Argon, Mr. Buddy became the new king, taking over all of the deck's wealth, while Argon was expelled from the club he himself had created. All in all, you can say that Noah Buddy became the owner of a gambling empire in less than transparent circumstances. Wow, talk about hitting the jackpot! Yep. That win saved Mr. Buddy from the edge of complete financial ruin, and simultaneously, it became a golden shield from his earlier crimes. He could now afford to erase his past and all his wrongdoings with it. And thus, he started a new life as the poker legend under the alias Rex House. One of the first things he did as the deck's new leader was create the Poker All-Stars Legends Tournament. And ever since that day, Mr. House has never played a single round of cards outside of that tournament. It's not like he had to, since winning the All-Stars Legends year after year would have been more than enough to keep his entire empire running, had it not been for Mr. House himself. What happened? You see, House's amazing skills did not extend to the world of big business. Time and time again, he invested in failed business venture after failed business venture to the point no self-respecting bank would do business with him. Coming up with the All-Star Legends tournament was his soul lightning in a jar, and his only source of actual income. I guess he never came to terms with that. And so, he kept trying, and over the years, he's been losing money by the millions. The only way for him to bounce back was to sell the deck's assets little by little. Eventually, the royal flush was all he had left. But didn't you say earlier that gambling is a lucrative business? I don't mean to pry, but I'd assume that the Royal Flush alone would have generated more than enough revenue for him. It did, at first. Say what you will about Argon, but he had good business sense running the casino back then. The rooms had just been renovated, security had been overhauled, and everything abided with the new laws of the land. All House had to do was sit on his rear and wait for the profits to roll in. But he insisted on running things his own way. And what exactly did that entail? House was all about things being nice and expensive, even after the money had run out. House tried to hide the fact he was in debt by doubling down on his extravagant spending. As a result, the profit margins of the royal flush are minuscule at best nowadays, hardly enough to keep things running. Sounds like he was going to gamble away his last pennies. I'm sure he would have done just that, but he was prevented by the law. You see, the casino has to have enough cash in its vaults to account for every single chip in play. Otherwise, the whole place will be shut down without mercy. To sum it up, House needed every penny he could get to keep the casino afloat. But it appears even that wasn't enough. He was going to keep trying his luck. Oh? So, what did he do? When you're strapped for cash and the banks won't hear you out, there's always one organization that is willing to give credit. 
Insider sources confirmed that House took out a massive loan from the Cadaverini crime family in the beginning of last year, with quite a significant interest rate. His investment went as well as you'd expect, and House ended up owing them over $100 million, which was due to be paid back this January. But that amounts to the entire prize pot for the All-Stars Legends Tournament! What a coincidence indeed. He had driven himself to the brink yet again. Not a very enviable position to find oneself in. My investigation into House also led me to believe that he had no way of paying what he owed them. So, the only way House could have paid his debt was if he won the All-Stars Legends Tournament again. So what exactly is it that you're hoping to uncover, Mr. Porter? While dubious, taking a loan from the mob is not exactly a crime. You're right, but we suspect that House was more than just another debtor to the Mafia. How so? The Cadaverini family's influence and wealth skyrocketed soon after House became indebted to them. It ain't a coincidence, I can tell you that. What I'm saying is that Rex House may have become a very important patsy for him, and I was tasked with finding proof of this. That way, we could finish building our case to bring them all down. Honestly, his role could have been anything from money laundering to organized gambling fraud. And that's about it. Looks like House won't have to worry about Mafia Hitman anymore, though. Just to rule out that possibility, do you think there's a possibility House was murdered by the mob? Not really. Offing House before the tournament would leave them no way of getting their money. So, it doesn't make sense to me. In that case, the culprit's motive lies somewhere else entirely. But where? Speaking of the investigation, the FBI came to investigate the crime scene today. Not sure what they were looking for, though. I suppose someone has to finish what I started before it's too late. Too late? Now that Mr. House has kicked the bucket, the mob is certain to make their move. If they had any ties to him or the casino, they will try cutting them. And it doesn't help that the Bureau's inside man is behind bars during this critical time. So where does this leave you? If you're working for the FBI, can't you just ask them to help you out? I'm afraid not. Being an undercover agent does not give you the right to act with impunity. In fact, it's almost the opposite. The normal protections afforded to agents are all gone, since the Bureau can't step in without revealing you as their agent. Even if Mr. House is dead? Paulo, I'm afraid all this is much bigger than just me, or Mr. House. We're after the biggest fish in the pond, and we may only ever get a single shot to bring them down. If the cavalry comes rushing to save me, those fish will get spooked, and the entire operation will be compromised. Not only that, but there's worse things to consider. If my role as a Fed gets outed, I will be on top of the Cadaverini's hit list. Sure, the Feds will put me in witness protection afterwards, but that doesn't mean the mob won't try getting their revenge through my associates. Wait, are you saying that? They could come after you. Well, that's not something I wanted to imagine. And that's also why we need rock-solid evidence that no amount of trickery will be able to counter. If the Cadaverini family ever ends up in court, you can bet your beeswax they will use every way imaginable to fight back. You know how the courts are these days. Unfortunately, for all my hard work, it's been difficult to find anything that would decisively tie House to illegal dealings with the Mafia or other crimes. And that's why you went to the tournament room alone that night? Yes. Either whoever called me there had good information, or Cat was out of the bag. It was worth taking the risk to know. So, even though we know why Jack went to the scene, we cannot bring it up in court. But the possible informant turned out to be Mr. House setting up an ambush for yours truly. Somehow, Mr. House had learned of my investigation and my true purpose at the casino. And from the looks of it, he was going to make sure I didn't live to tell the tale. Yet, I breathe still. Like it or not, I guess I ought to be thankful to whoever did him in first. Anything else you found out today? Well, you might be interested to know that we found a wiretap in the masked stranger's room. There could very well be more around the casino. That would explain it. I should have been more careful. 
House was not the type of person to actually trust anyone. But if House knew about you, how can you be so sure that the mob doesn't already know? I can't be sure. But it would be in House's own best interest to not let the Cadaverinis in on the fact that he was being investigated, if he wished to carry on business as usual. Returning to the events of that night, do you have any idea why House was dressed as the masked stranger that night? Afraid not. It was certainly a surprise to me. Obviously, he must have been planning something. I don't think he just happened to have an exact replica of the masked stranger's outfit lying around for Halloween. House had been pretty obsessed with the masked stranger before this year's All-Stars Legends. And for a good reason. The sponsors promised that the tournament would get the requested $100 million prize pool, but only if they had the masked stranger as one of the players. I remember House saying something along the lines of, the masked stranger will be there, one way or another. I figure House must have had the suit made in case the stranger never arrived. Knowing how badly House needed the money, nothing could be allowed to risk the tournament. But why would Mr. House wiretap the stranger's room? I can hazard a guess as to why. House was used to playing against the same people every year, and even that number had dwindled over the years as the prestige of the club had been called into question. What caused the deck's reputation to plummet then? The usual, rumors of corruption, whispers of house winning every year due to having leverage over the competition, among other things. However, the masked stranger, being a poker genius with an undefeated record, posed a real threat to Mr. House's plan. The way I see it, he desperately needed to find anything he could use against the stranger. So House wanted to get leverage over the masked stranger at all costs. And that's all I can tell you. What I can say for sure is that I did not shoot Mr. House. We needed him alive for our investigation. Now, we can only hope to find any evidence he may have left behind. So what happens next? I'll keep sitting here, hoping for you to clear my name. Frankly, we've got a snowball's chance in hell of making a case otherwise. Meaning, the only way for us to come out on top is to find the person who did this. Which is easier said than done when our star witness is still missing in action. And what about Daddy? Are you going to tell him about your secret? Of course, Nikki deserves to know. But it'll have to wait until the time is right. Trucy, I'm sorry. I wish I could have told you this under better circumstances. I... I understand. But after you're free, you owe us all a nice dinner! That smile. While others may not pick up on it, I can always tell when Trucy is forcing it. I can't really blame her. If House was as important to Jack's investigation as he says he was, then there's no way Jack would have shot him. But still, the question of who and why remains unsolved. Mr. House's dark past, hidden behind a gilded facade, could be the key to unraveling this mystery. But we will have to make it through tomorrow's trial if we are ever going to get to the truth behind it all.